Welcome back to my channel guys. Today we're going to be discussing the trench coat and how to properly style this item. We're going to be talking about slight variations, colors, materials, very, very exciting stuff guys. So let's get right into it, shall we? The trench coat was first popularized during World War I amongst British soldiers, but can even date back to the mid to late 19th century, but most notably became popular for its heavy duty waterproofing capabilities when fighting in the trenches during the World War. The original trench coat is traditionally double breasted with buttons coming down the front with substantial lapels and a belt by the waist. So how can you style this classic and timeless jacket in the modern world? This jacket can range in multiple colors from traditionally khaki to navy blue, black, and also gray. The reason for these dark or cream colored jackets is because the trench coat takes up so much of an outfit. When you don this beautiful garment, you don't want the color to be too loud as the jacket is ever so present when you wear it. These colors are also very versatile and can fit with a wider range of colors when wearing a garment under this jacket. You can use differing and unique colors rather than more common colors, but keep these colors dark or more muted. So instead of a bright saturated red, go with a red that is more muted, or instead of a brighter, more saturated green, go with an olive colored trench coat. These colors are more discreet and are able to mix with other colored garments much easier and more plentifully. So stay away from overly bright, vibrant colors. Now, before we get into more style, I want to talk about material. The trench coat I've been discussing up until this point is the original trench coat made out of gabardine, which is a twill worsted wool fabric made from a variety of fibers like wool, cotton, and polyester, which these create a strong fabric resistant to wear and tear. The diagonal weave of this material gives it a very smooth and sleek appearance. This is also a very tight weave, meaning that it'll repel water very well. Some other interesting features of some trench coats is that they can have detachable linings in them, opening up the possibility to utilize them in different temperatures like fall, winter, and spring. This is the type of coat where you should take an extra degree of thought to the price tag and possibly invest more than usual as this can be a coat that can last a decade or even longer. Or if you can afford it, This next jacket I'll be talking about is not technically a trench coat, but this is another jacket that is very, very similar that you will commonly see. This is a pea coat, traditionally shorter and made of wool, usually above the knee, but sometimes does fit into the trench coat length by or lower than the knee. One key difference is gabardine is a tightly woven worsted fabric combed from long staple wool fibers and has commingling fibers working together as mentioned before. But wool is loosely woven, creating a soft, more lofty textile. Wool is a great fabric and a more appropriate coat for the winter season as it is more insulative than a gabardine cotton blend, which is a common blend. So if you want something warm, stick with wool. The higher percentage of wool in the coat, the warmer. Getting a blend will be cheaper, but try keeping the wool the dominant fabric at a minimum ratio of 60-40. Some synthetic fibers used are warm to the touch, but aren't as insulative. One of the other styles and fabrics I want to talk about is the leather trench coat. Leather is a natural fabric made from tanned animal skin. Leather is durable, insulative, and very stylish. It's also a great option for trench coats if you're going for something with a tad more sheen to it and a little bit more of an offbeat look compared to gabardine or wool. One thing to keep note of is real leather doesn't hold up well with heavy, heavy rain as it is very porous and absorbs liquids and can only tolerate light rainfalls. So instead go for faux leather as most synthetic leathers are waterproof and they are manufactured from petroleum based plastics. But generally speaking, faux leather doesn't last nearly as long as real leather. All these trench coats are very versatile, but gabardine is my personal favorite. You can style it with a t-shirt or a sweater for a more casual look, and it'll also be easy to adjust layering and comfortability. 
especially during a temperately ebb and flow season like spring or even early fall. Having the coat and the trousers a similar color can give a more cohesive look while keeping the undershirt different for contrast. You can also elevate a casual look by using boots, especially ones that have more of a shine to them, to stand out because the gabardine will have a lower luster to it. Bring in the wool coat if you want to make the outfit warmer and if you want a rougher exterior surface. I think the wool looks slightly more professional due to it generally having a more plain and simple look, so it's great for a business casual attire. The leather jacket generally is seen with coordinating colored boots and goes very nice with jeans adding to that badass appeal that it's so known for. Now with formal wear, gabardine, wool, and leather can all look nice with a suit. Gabardine works well with a suit in multiple colors and goes back decades. When putting the trench coat on a suit, it generally looks nicer buttoned up than all undone, but you never want to button the last button, the bottom button. You run the risk of making your outfit look unnatural and too tight. Keep the last button undone. The wool coat looks especially nice on a suit, given that it's super clean and professional. Cream coats look extremely nice and are common in gabardine and wool, and will have the suit and the jacket themselves stand out more due to the contrast with a darker suit. With the leather jacket, try and stick with black, brown, or cream as it looks the best in these. And because it has the most sheen out of these jackets, you don't want too much color. Make sure your suit is fitted as well. Remember, a jacket is going over top and it drapes, so you don't want your pants looking like it's a part of the trench coat. So you want to make sure the overall suit is the right fit. And when trying a trench coat on in stores, wear your suit so you can make sure the coat will fit on top of a suit and blazer well and not just a thin t-shirt or a dress shirt. This is to ensure that you'll have the most range with your coat in regards to comfort and style. And the trench coat should skim over your body not too loosely but have enough room to wear over other clothing. Lastly, you can also spice the outfit up a bit with some nice designs on the trench coat, but keep it minimal and don't have large parts of the coat be different colors. This breaks up the trench coat into large pieces and you want the trench coat to be one uniform look, whether it's the design or just one plain color. And in the winter time, I'd even add a nice scarf, nicely tucked in the button up coat or just resting in between the opened jacket. Thank you guys for watching to the end of this video. Make sure to comment down below your favorite style trench coat that you've seen in this video. And also, don't forget, of course, hit that subscribe button, like, and share it with all your beautiful friends, guys. And I know I've been overdue for a haircut for the past month, and I'm gonna get the sides trimmed down a little bit and the top a bit. So, anywho, guys, love you all. See you soon.